Today's show of the Casey Stubbs journey is the second part of vision. So this is a three-part series. Yesterday I talked about why, or last week rather, I talked about why it was important to have a vision. And now parts two and three are two different visions that I have. And I'm going to describe briefly about the difference. So right now I'm going to be talking about my vision my life's vision, my personal vision, which includes my relationships and everything uh, in those relationships, uh, what I see myself doing uh, now. In the next episode, after this, it's going to be the business vision. And the primary difference is that I think that in life, we really have to look at our lives as a whole and I only have one life. I've only been given one life and I have to make it count. And it's important for me to focus on that and not to waste a single moment, to enjoy it, to do what I've been called to do. And I have to really put that into focus. Now the next part of it, which is the business part, that's, I'm leading that vision, but that is really primarily written for my workers, for the team that's running that business. Uh, I'm the coach, I'm the leader, but I'm not really going to be doing the day-to-day -day work to make that vision a reality. So this vision is for me. This is the work that I have to do, whereas the other vision that I'm going to talk about next time, the vision that's going to specifically grow the business to 20 million, that's for my team. That's the work they're going to have to do. Right. So this one is really important to me. So I'm going to just share it. I'm going to be really open and honest, and this episode's going to go really deep. And so if you're not into that deep stuff, then this might not be the episode for you. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention is that we're going to do a new segment. I, I, I really want the discussion to take off. I, I want us to have a community and to have discussion. So I'm going to do a discussion session at the end where I'm going to ask a really uh, pointed discussion question and I'm going to post it in the show notes and the link to three different social media platforms so whatever social platform that you're on is where we can participate in that discussion and I will monitor all three so I will be participating in it I feel like it's crucial for us to uh, see people grow that we discuss things, that you really uh, go back and forth with it, that you take the time to write it out. So for the people that are listening that want to go to the next level, this is for you. For those that, that want to actually accomplish something, you can go to that discussion and then just answer your question and start to be involved and get involved in people's lives. So we'll do that at the end. Okay, let's get started. Now this vision I have with me. It's, I keep it with me everywhere I go, okay? It's my life plan, so to speak. And I got the concept from Michael Hyatt's book, Living Forward. And I'll put the link to that in the show notes if you're interested. And uh, I went through his book and did a lot of that. Uh, so a lot of this may seem familiar if you're familiar with Michael Hyatt's book. Uh, so I'm just going to go through and then I'm going to talk about each individual component. So my vision statement. The first thing I have on here is living in the presence of God and in obedience to Him. That's my primary focus for life, is to have a relationship with God and to be in obedience to Him. Uh, the second part is loving and serving my wife and helping her grow into the woman that God intended. Third, loving my children, building a relationship with them, and teaching them about the Lord and how to live a successful life. And fourth, having a godly influence with everyone I meet and bring his kingdom to earth. So those are four key components. That's what my life I envision to look like. That's what, what my goals are. That's my purpose. And it's not really specific. It's kind of open. So that can take any different path. I don't know what the path is going to look like, but this is what I want it to be. And so uh, one of the things that, that Michael Hyatt emphasized in the book was how do you want to be remembered, 
right? Think of the end as the result with your relationships because relationships can be a very tricky thing. And you might be thinking, well, this is a business podcast. Why are you talking about relationships? Well, well, think about this, okay? I don't want to be a success in business and destroy my relationships. I've seen it a lot where successful people Their kids end up, they have no relationship with their kids. They don't have a relationship with their wife. Uh, I've seen it with, really, it's it's something that happens to people like me, which were high achievers, right? We focus on the goal, we focus on the prize, and then we destroy the ones that love us the most in the process, right? And so for me, I always would say, I don't want to be a hero in the world and a zero at home. Right. I have to make sure because this is a real thing for me. I could I could get derailed easily. And if you conquer the world and your your family relationships aren't there and you don't have a relationship later in life and you have all the money in the world, uh, that's not worth it. It's then you fail. I've seen a lot of uh, rich old guys live alone and uh from not personally, but from stories and books that I've read about people. Um, So I don't want that to be me, right? So I'm putting my relationships as a top priority, and it's critical. Uh, And that's why I'm sharing this with you. Yes, this is my process to get to the 20 million. It's still a real goal. I'm not going to shrink back from it. I will achieve it. But this is actually more important. This is critical. I will drop the $20 million and I will drop that business in a second if I cannot have my relationships with my family. Okay, and so uh, very important that we handle those relationships and put them first. You know, your kids, they might not really care how successful you are. Now, they might look up to you and even if they don't, even if they don't feel like you love them, and you're successful, they might look up to you and hold you on a pedestal. But that's not the kind of relationship I want. I've seen kids have high-performing parents that don't have a great relationship. They don't even feel worthy of their parents. They just are trying to live into their shadow and trying to live up to their success, and they always kind of feel empty because of it. You know, the relationship wasn't what was uh, modeled, but it was the success. And if they couldn't have the success that their dad had, well, then my dad was a hero, but I'm just not as good of a person as him, right? And so, <laughs> and I don't want my kids to feel like that. I don't want my kids to ever feel like my success is more important than my relationship with them. And it's the only way I can do that is by spending time with them. And the same with my wife. The only way I can make her feel like she's the, the most important thing is by spending time with her and by putting her first. I don't want them to look up to me for being successful because that's not really important. I mean, it is important to me, but it's not the foundation. It's relationships got to come first. And one thing I have to remember and tell myself a lot is I'm a high achiever, right? And I'm not ashamed of that, but at the same time, it doesn't make me better than everyone else, okay? Not everyone is a high achiever. I personally didn't make myself like this. Like, I've always been there. It's always been plugged into me just to be going, moving all the time and to always be active and to always be going after stuff and to have big goals and big dreams. No one told me to do that. It's just there. It's it's a gift that I've been given, and it's great. It's wonderful. I love that lifestyle. Uh, but it doesn't mean I'm better than anyone else, and it doesn't mean that my kids have to be that, right? Or my wife has to be that. That's me. That's who I am. One thing I'm learning along the path is that I want to, my mission is to help my family, my wife, and my kids to grow into who they were meant to be. That doesn't mean I'm going to teach them to settle or that I'm going to teach them to just not grow. I want them to grow and to develop. They all have great giftings, but that doesn't mean they're going to be a high achiever and successful. Those are two different things. I want them to grow into the gifts that they have and help them do it and help them to be great people and people of integrity and people of high character, but not to be, 
I'm not going to fit them into my mold as to be uh, a high achiever like me. And I don't want them to feel like, oh, my success is my most important thing. They have to come first. And so I'm going to share with you how I want to be remembered um, in life. And so this this is basically like if you were... Uh, if you were at your own funeral and you were listening to people talk about you, what would they say? Uh, and so one of the things for with my wife uh, that I want to be her, I wanted to be remembered that I love my wife and worked very hard to ensure that we had the best marriage possible and that she was able to be uh, a more complete person because of my love for her and that we walk together in unity. Uh, for my children, my statement for my children is that their dad was dedicated to them and that his primary concern was that they were loved and trained as best as possible. Uh, and for my extended family, my parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters, uh, that they had, uh, that I loved them and that I was very proud of them. Uh, with my colleagues, that I always did a business with integrity and put relationships first above business. And I'm in business to make money, but honestly, my main priority is business relationships. I will take a loss rather than hurt a business relationship. And uh, that's just how it is for me. The business is important. I want to make a profit. I want to make money. But I care about the people that I do business with. And my relationship with them is more important than a quick buck. Okay? And I have lost money a lot because of that. I try to put myself into win-win situations, find relationships of people that feel the same way, people that I can count on. Uh, a, a, a reliable business relation is worth a relationship is worth a lot of money, right? Because we both have the same goal, uh, helping each other out. And then the last uh, segment here was friends, uh, that I was there for them and always a source of godly inspiration, right? I want to be there for my friends. So now that's the categories that I'm, that I'm rating. And then later on, I go in and I break down the areas, how I'm going to achieve that. And what you measure in life is what you're going to get. You measure your days, you measure your weight, you measure your money, you measure your relationships. The thing that you're measuring is what you can, it's how you know whether success or failure is happening. So we have to be able to measure it. That's why I take this thing with me all the time and I look at it all the time, right? And uh, uh, something that, that I wanted to hit about change and in order for me to accomplish these things, I have to change. In order for me to build a relationship with my wife, I have to change. The way that I'm currently doing things is not good enough to grow it to the next level. I have to change some things. And the best way to change in my personal experience is to focus. Is to focus on what you want to change. And it's not looking at the bad thing but looking at what you want to become as to who I am. I, I think identity is critical. It's that first area is, remember, that first one was my, my mission was a, a, the presence of God and obedience to God. My identity as being a son of God and, in, and that he cares for me and loves me, that's my identity. That's who I am. And so when you become something, that's the best way to change, right? And so as far as a good husband, I don't think about my failures. I think about them. I measure them. Did I leave up to it? But when I'm focusing on, I focus on the person that I want to become, the husband that I want to become. So these areas, I'm definitely not fully there yet. I've made a lot of progress, but I'm just going to read them here and go through them. And these are my action plans. So the first one is, how do I get from where I am right now to where I want to be? Number one, in order to put God first. Uh, to, to devote my life fully to God and His Word and to live a life that is obvious to all that I'm walking with Jesus. So in order for me to get there, I have to change, like I was saying. 
because uh, my current reality, I, you got to look at the current reality hard and say, oh man, this is ugly, but not let it destroy you. Not just to stick your head in the sand and give up, but to look at the way things are and continue to work towards your envisioned future. So the current reality is that I am walking with God, but I'm not as disciplined as I could be in my area of reading and prayer and, and living a life of praying uh, all the time, right? Uh, and so sometimes I seem like I just fit it in rather than follow my schedule and being disciplined in my schedule. That's the current reality. Uh, so my specific commitment is to spend 30 minutes a day uh, in prayer and reading and find a special location to do so. That's my commitment that I need to uh, action on. That's the action item to help this, this vision come to pass. Uh, and find a special location and schedule a specific time to do so, which for me it's going to be in the morning before work, uh, and incorporate uh, Bible reading in that as well. And I have a Bible reading plan to help me read the Bible for the whole year. Uh, and then the next part of this I put is for myself, okay, focusing on me. Because I want to, I want to see my marriage grow and to have my wife blossom and grow into the woman that she was meant to be. But in order for me to do that, I have to be in good shape. Like I have to take care of myself first. You can't take care of anyone else. I have a whole bunch of people that I need to take care of. And by the way, I didn't even mention this. Uh, I do have nine children, right? And so for me, it's even more important that I take care of all these areas because I have a, a greater responsibility than the average person, right? Because I have to take care of so many people there. And I have a lot of people that I'm responsible for in my life, right? There's a lot of people. It's my wife and my children, but then there's my uh, extended family. There's uh, church relationships where people are counting on me, business relationships where people are counting on me, people in my community that people are counting on me, right? I have to take care of myself first or those people will be left behind. If I neglect self-care, those people will not be able to depend on me. Okay, so it's a really important priority. Okay, so I, here, let me read my, my, my statement here. Uh, to build myself up so I can pour myself out to others. To plan everything and leave nothing for drifting. And to ensure that I don't drift from God, but respond and obey the whole Holy Spirit. Life is too short to let things go. So envision future is I want to be hearing God daily so he can use me in the lives of others. Uh, and I have to be growing physically, spiritually, and watching what I'm eating. So exercise, eating, and spiritual growth. Okay. Uh, and that includes Bible reading as well as other books and training and learning making sure that I'm always learning and being connected with people, having community. These are all things that are really important in my life. So I have to put that in, uh, in place. And I'm, I'm actually pretty good at a lot of this stuff, and that's why I've been able to do what I've done, but I want to get to the next level, right? So, so let's just take a look at my current reality. My current reality is that I work very hard, uh, and sometimes because of my work ethic, I put myself aside. I can have a tendency to work myself into the ground. Uh, when I was a, uh, not married, I actually worked four jobs at a time. And not for a long period of time. I only did this for a short period of time because I literally collapsed. <laughs> I was like 23. I collapsed because I was working so much. Kind of funny. Um, but um, I, I a lot of times will neglect self-care because I feel like work is important, and it is, but I, it's priority. Uh, I'm really good at listening to audiobooks, uh, so I listen to books. That's something that I do, enjoy doing. I listen to my books on the way to work. I've built that in. Uh, 
Uh, I'm good at attending trainings, events, and mentoring. I sign up for all those things. I go to live events. I go to live trainings. I have mentors and coaches. I visit with my pastor once a week. I get, I'm discipled by him. I, I'm very good at that. I'm great at attending church and being uh, impacted in the community. I'm doing a really good job of that. Uh, I need to work a little bit more on my healthy eating. And I've been doing pretty good, but I've been measuring what I've eaten, tracking it. need to continue to grow there. Um, I need to improve with my physical fit. I, I walk a lot, uh, but I still need to continue to grow, incorporate a more disciplined exercise plan. And I also need to improve with my consistency in my relationship with God. So, so now I wrote my current re- reality, and then next I wrote write some specific commitments. And my specific commitments are to read two books per month so that I'm growing and learning, and that will enable me to help others. Uh, attend two live church conferences each year. A specific commitment is to attend one mission trip each year. To attend two live business trainings each year. Attend one mind, uh, one business mastermind per month. Attend business coaching sessions every month. Attend marriage coaching sessions every month. Work out five days a week. Eat healthy. Develop an eating plan and journal. Maintain a weight at 200 pounds. Um, these are my commitments. Get counsel on all major decisions. Spend a minimum of one hour a week with my pastors, uh, schedule quarterly reviews of my life plan to measure my growth, and then to schedule one longer annual review for the plan. Uh, so that's my self-care strategy, okay, and how I'm going to act that out. So I have my self-care, all of the goals, and it, I could go through the entire, my entire plan, but you get the idea. That's how I'm going to do it. The next one I have here is for my wife, which is really important. That's my top priority is to, is to treasure her, value her, help her life to grow and to accomplish great things for us to walk in unity, for, for me to love her, to cherish her, to take care of her, to make her feel like she's the number one woman in the world. That's all in my goals. Um, and I, I got my specific commitments, but I'm, I'm actually running out of time for today's episode because I want to keep these timely because, uh, and you, you get the idea. I've got the same mission for my kids, uh, my extended family, my parents, my brothers and sisters. Uh, I have action steps on how to build all those relationships because at the end of the day, if my relationships die, then I, I, I feel like I, it's a tragedy, right? Taking care of those loved ones around me is much more important than a business. But the business is used in so many ways to bless others uh, as well and to take care of family and friends and other things. So that's uh, also really important. <laughs> it's a kind of a crazy balancing act, but uh, praise the Lord. We're, we're making it one step at a time. So if you have any questions about that, hit me up. I'm here. I'm available. I love to help people. I love to answer questions. But right now, let's go on to the discussion section. Uh, So here's today's question. Today's question is, what is holding you back from writing out your vision statement for your life? And what, so that's part one, what's holding you back from writing out your vision statement for your life? And what do you need to remove in your life to be able to write it down? Like what obstacles do you need to pull out? Is it a mindset? Is it setting the time aside to do it? Is it you don't think it's important? Like what's stopping you and how are you going to overcome that so that you can actually begin to write out a life plan like this? Because I'm going to tell you the time that I've taken to do this at the end of my days when my relationships are uh, really fruitful and I have invested my life into others. At the end of the day, I'm going to look back and I'm going to say, I'm really glad I took the time to do this. Well, that's it. Uh, Thank you so much. I love to hear from you guys. I want to see what you guys are saying in the discussion section. So please do that. And if you enjoyed today's podcast, please 
go and visit it on Apple iTunes, on the Apple Podcasts, and leave a five-star review and a thoughtful comment. I, that's a great way for me to um, gauge the success of the podcast. Okay, well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode where I talk about my business vision. 